Hey YouTube, it's Eric. I'm gonna try to keep this video fairly quick. Um, this video, this, this is just gonna show like more definitive proof that there's no separation of church and state in the United States. Um, and I'm highlighting George Bush again. Like George Bush, I'll, I'll show you a source for this. Like George Bush, George W. Bush, um, like set a record for the amount of times the United States president went to see the Pope. George Bush went to see the Pope six separate times. Um, and like the Bushes as a whole, like the uh, George Bushes, George W. Bush's uh, great grandfather, George Herbert Walker, was trained by the Jesuits at uh, Stonyhurst College in England. And like George W. Bush and George H. Uh, w. Bush are named after the Jesuit trained George Herbert Walker. But I'm going to show you George W. Bush spoke at the Knights of Columbus convention in uh, 2004, and George W. George H. W. Bush spoke at the Knights of Columbus Convention back in 1992, but I found like, an actual PDF. I was browsing on the presidential libraries websites on George W. Bush's presidential library, and I found like a PDF of the speech that George W. Bush gave at the Knights of Columbus Convention in Dallas, Dallas of all places where John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And also I found that Jesuit trained Bill Clinton was attending this conference. <laughs> very tellingly, the Knights of Columbus are a very bipartisan organization. They infiltrate the Republicans and the Democrats. I'll show you the stories for Bill Clinton attending. But um, this is, this was a very revealing, uh, <laughs> very revealing speech to say the least. Uh, here's the link for it right here. This is George W. Bush's remarks to the Knights of Columbus Convention in Dallas, Texas. And as the, I think there's a photo of Bush here. Someone sent me this on uh, Reddit. Let me find this here for a second. As you can see, and like you can find photos of George W. Bush attending a Red Mass. Again, like on September 17th, 2001, George Bush referred to uh, the war on terrorism as a crusade. Who launched the crusades historically? Well, the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church. Um, <clears throat> let me see here. So I'll show you, there's a photo of Bush at this uh, Knights of Columbus convention in Dallas. Um, where was that here? Okay, here. Yeah, here's a photo here of Bush shaking hands with fourth degree knights in Dallas. I'll zoom in there. <laughs> this is the president of the United States. Like, and if you look at 9/11, like the the mayor of New York, Mayor uh, Rudolph Giuliani, is a devout Roman Catholic. He's I think Giuliani's even in the Knights of Saint Lazarus. Um, probably a Knight of Malta as well. The head of the CIA, George Tenet, was a Roman Catholic trained at Georgetown. The deputy director of the CIA, John Brennan, a devout Roman Catholic trained at Fordham. Current, John Brennan is currently the chair of the Fordham University Intelligence Board. And John Brennan was uh, instrumental in drafting the disposition matrix kill list. And uh, I'll show you a connection with the, in the Bush administration with Homeland Security. Homeland Security like has like declared that like um, if the U.S. government declares like declares that you are a terrorist or a threat to national security, you have no right to habeas corpus. You can thank the Bush administration for that. It was in the Bush administration where Viet Din, about Roman Catholic professor at Georgetown, Jesuit trained, had uh, was the chief architect of the Patriot Act. If you devout Roman Catholic, Viet Din is also the board of directors of News Corp. And you see here, he was the, also an assistant attorney general of the United States uh, during the time of 9-11. You see here, he was the chief architect of the Patriot Act, the board of directors at News Corp. Born in the South Vietnam, where the Catholic uh, Crusade Holy War took place, uh, launching uh, Ngo Diem into power. But you see here, <clears throat> Diem, he also went to Harvard Law School. He was a member of the Phoenix Club. We see here, Georgetown University Law Center. Would you look at that? He's a current professor at Georgetown. And his expertise lies in constitutional law and corporations law. Oh, I bet. Like John J. McCoy said that the United States Constitution is just a scrap of paper. And that I'm sure Viet Den views that as well by signing the Patriot Act, <laughs> a complete unconstitutional piece of legislation. Um, but yeah, the, I'm just showing you that the, the, there is no separation of church and state in the United States. Um, <laughs> just look at pictures of the Al Smith dinner. But the, this, this uh, speech here really uh, shows that. And I'm just going to read some of the remarks here. And, uh, and you can picture, like, while I'm reading this, you know, you can picture, you know, George Bush's accent. You say, oh, we got to go get the terrorists either with us or you're against us. You know, <laughs> I think Bush was probably, like, uh, I think he was an alcoholic. You know, Joe McCarthy was an alcoholic. Ted, Ted Kennedy became an alcoholic 
after he knew that the the Jesuits and the CIA and like the military intelligence like and, and the mob like murdered his uh, two brothers, and uh, the Jesuits told him like you have to be a good little boy and shut up, and uh, like obviously like that hurt his conscience. But Ted Kennedy became an alcoholic afterwards, and he he accepted honorary degrees from um, Jesuit Boston College, Jesuit St. Peter's, and uh, Jesuit Holy Cross after he knew like deep inside that they were responsible for killing his uh his brother two br- both brothers um but in the case of john kennedy like lee harvey oswald spoke at uh stony hurst or uh, no he spoke at um Mo- the jesuit college in mobile alabama i think that's uh spring hill college three months before the assassination but here's the speech from bush i just wanted to show you here so this is his remarks to the knights of columbus convention in dallas and there's just some very revealing information in here so bush said, and this is coming from the guy the president the president of the united states said that he views like God in the eyes of Pope Benedict the 16th. And just think about, I, I actually put on my blog, I put a video of this, but you can see it. I found a transcript on the Ronald Reagan presidential library of Ronald Reagan's speech, except being accepted as a Knight of Malta, further proof that there's no se- separation of church and state in the United States. Ronald Reagan was the president also who initiated official diplomatic relations with the Vatican in 1984, but you can read uh, Ronald Reagan's uh, speech here at the 1989 Knights of Malta. And R- Ronald Reagan was knighted as a sitting president into the Knights of Malta. And Ronald Reagan refers to J. Peter Grace as Mr. President in this speech, <laughs> showing you who's in control. You have a sitting president calling the heads of the Knights of Malta Mr. President and like bowing down to him the entire time. Okay, but um, I'm just going to read a bit of this Bush speech here. So this is Bush. Thanks for the warm welcome. Welcome to Texas. And thanks for inviting me so I can come home. Laughter. I really appreciate the Knights of Columbus. This strong organization believes in families and faith and compassion. Oh, really? So like they believed in families when the Knights of Columbus for advocating for Archbishop Aloysius Stepniak uh, to be free of persecution for his barbarous acts in overseeing the mass m- mass murder of over 800,000 in uh, Yugoslavia. The Knights of Columbus actually were the organization that funded the Aloysius Stepniak High School in New York City. And Archbishop Aloysius Stepniak, who was trained by the Jesuits at the Gregorian University, was like the, is the biggest scum of the earth that you could ever come across. Yeah, but you see here that so Bush is very appreciative of the Knights of Columbus. The strong organization believes in families, like just a mockery, but continuing in faith and compassion for those in need. And I'm honored you'd invite me to the 102nd convention or convocation of this great organization. This is like, look at this here. The current, I'll show you, Carl Anderson, the current knight, a supreme knight, is trained by the Jesuits. I'll show you. I appreciate Carl Anderson and his leadership. It's, it's, <laughs> this is the sitting president of the United States saying this about the supreme knight of the, knight of, of the Knights of Columbus. I've gone to know Carl because you see he's more than just an introducer of presidents. He's a person who works with presidents. Like, <laughs> just telling you right here, like, to, just like to all, you know, like the, the people in America who are concerned about the separation of church and state, Bush is just saying like a big fuck you to you. Pardon my language, but <laughs> well, I'll show you here. Carl Anderson is the current Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus. You see, he's the Supreme Knight. Anderson is the Vice President of the Washington Session of the Pontifical John Paul II Institute. And guys, I, sh- I did a video on this. This is further proof that there's no separation of church and state in the U.S. The uh, the current Presidential Commission on Scholars, and these are these are this these, this is the group that actually selects like the books that are going to be like promoted, and you know, in like the the bookstores in America. And these this is the organization that uh, selects which scholars are going to become like the what which scholars are going to have like a wider platform if you get promoted by this uh, u.s presidential commission on scholars as a scholar you're gonna have a wider platform and the current pedophile archbishop of washington car and he's a cardinal cardinal whirl is on the presidential commission of scholars okay <laughs> the cat like this catholic control is is all over the place let alone like the current chairman of the uh the, the head of the immigration department, Lee Cisna, devout Roman Catholic, went to Georgetown. The head of the Federal Reserve Bank, devout Roman Catholic, Jerome Powell, went to Georgetown and wrote on the uh, Georgetown Hoya newspaper at Georgetown. I think Jerome Powell was even a valedictorian. <laughs> you see, Carl Anderson was on the board of trustees at the Catholic University of America and on the Basilia 
of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. And there's the uh, that's the church in Washington D.C. Important to note, guys, there's Catholic insurgency in America. If you read Tupper Saucy's book, The Words of Evil, even if you read um, the Jesuit priest James Hennessy S.J.'s journal article on the life of John Carroll, you'll see that the Roman Catholic Church was actually instrumental in creating America. And like the, the first mayor of Washington, D.C. was a devout Catholic named Robert Brent, who was actually the nephew of the Jesuit priest John Carroll, who founded Georgetown. You can't make it up. Like the United States, uh, United States Revolutionary Army was primarily funded by the Roman Catholic Gardaqui Banking House of Spain. Diego Gardaqui was the first Spanish ambassador to the United States. Diego de Gardaqui uh, was a Basque. And John Carroll uh, was praising him uh, <laughs> for in his activities in the United States. Gardaqui laid the first cornerstone of St. Peter's Cathedral in New York. Gardaqui had a brother who was a Roman Catholic uh, archbishop and a cardinal over in Europe. Uh, there was a uh, there was a ship even named after Gardaqui that was used in the Spanish American War. And there's a there's a statue of Gardaqui in um, Washington D.C. This is the guy I'm referring to here. These are the characters, like the, I'm saying, the United, the, the Catholic Church. The re, there's a reason why the Jesuits have never been expelled from the United States. Okay, <laughs> there's a reason for that. It's because they had a key role to play in the foundation of the United States. Okay, but here's the Gardaqui statue in Philadelphia. Okay, and also like the, the so on top of Gardaqui, another primary backer of the United States Revolutionary Army was Jesuit trained Charles Carroll. And I found out recently in the uh, article, I have this in my library, uh, uh, proposed diplomatic relations between the Knights of Malta and the United States between James Monroe while he was, James Monroe was representing the Americans while he was stationed in France as a foreign minister. And does, is it a coincidence, guys, that James Monroe had a son who became Andrew Monroe S.J.? Actually, you know that that's if you go, I'll I'll pull that up here. Give me a second. This is in an article I uh, journal article I put on my uh, library. It's called "Some Catholic Notes on Some Catholic Converts." And I'm not, I'm not going to read the whole Bush speech, but you just here. I'm just going to show you. That he says Carl Anderson is more than just an introducer to presidents. He works with the presidents. And then Bush says that oh, we need to. Always, we have to remember to keep the uh, a relationship between uh, uh, separation of church and state, but that we shouldn't uh, do away with the church's influence. Like he, it's a very you know Jesuitical way of saying that like we still need to have uh, the church influence the state. <laughs> he says that in a speech that you can read. Um, give me a second here. I think it's down here in my library. I just want to show you, like James Monroe. This is a, so. This is another U.S. president who had a son who became a Jesuit or someone related to him. Um, the first one, or the Robert Francis Taft, S.J., was a younger cousin of William Howard Taft, skull and bonesman, who was U U.S. president. William Howard Taft, coincidentally, was Theodore Roosevelt's uh, personal ambassador to the Vatican um, when the uh, United States. Uh, invaded the Philippines and they were negotiating with the Roman Catholic Church on the land settlements. And uh, you bit President William Howard Taft and William Howard Taft was uh, nominated to or nominated Jesuit trained Edward Douglas White to the Supreme Court trained at Georgetown and Jesuit High School, who was the Chief Justice when the Federal Reserve Act was signed. That is a fact that every single shill on the Internet will hide from you. <laughs> that the Chief Justice when the United States Federal Reserve Act was signed was Jesuit trained Edward Douglas White. And I'm gonna pull this up here. This is the PDF, it's in some notes on some convert relatives of the presidents. And the George Washington section, like first section here proves the shadow of doubt that there's no separation of church and state. <laughs> Look at this, James Monroe. Look at this, Father Andrew Monroe SJ is a son of the President Monroe. And President Monroe, if you go through my article, was the president who, uh, or he was negotiating between the United States and the Order of Malta. You see right here, this was done in the William and Mary Quarterly. Edgar Herskin Hume was a military officer in the United States who also wrote. 
And this is what it's, I'll show you this if you haven't read this. This is just, uh, it made a lot of sense to me because on top of all the other information I, I shared earlier in this video relating how Gardaqui and the Carols were, were uh, key financiers of the American Revolutionary Army. Um, you're going to see that the French Knights of Malta actually, because you have to realize that the British would have defeated the United States if Spain and France didn't come to the aid of the United States. A lot of people forget that France and Spain came to the aid of the United States. Okay, but you see here, um, one of the great naval figures of the 18th century was one of these officers, Knight of Malta, Pierre-André de Suffren de Saint-Tropez, and a Belali of the order and sometimes its ambassador at the court of his most Christian majesty. Suffren was early in 1778 appointed general of the galleys of the order by the Grand Master. Suffren was uh, a French admiral who served in the American Revolutionary War as a naval uh, admiral fighting with the Americans. Suffren was early in 1778 appointed general of the galleys of the order by the Grand Master of this high office. He relinquished to serve under Admiral de Grasse in the American War. The Count de Grasse himself was a knight of the Order of Malta, as were not a few of the other French officers who served in the American Revolution. Among them were the Count de Colbert, Le Mavrier, Admiral de Sambusi, Commander de Espinaux, Le Marquis de Castellan Magistry, the Brigadier de Chevalier de Grasse Preville and the Chevalier de Vallon, the Count de Langeron, the two Counts de Lameth, the Viscount de Nuales, who is a brother-in-law of the Marquis de Lafayette, who actually had a quote warning Americans of the influence of Jesuit priests in America, <laughs> and the Viscount de Maribou was a Knight of Malta, the Chevalier de Luzerne. The Chevalier de Luzerne was the first French minister to the United States and others. So Diego de Gardaqui, the, the Spanish minister to the United States, I think no doubt was a Knight of Malta as well. Just showing you that like, there's an intimate relationship between the Vatican and the United States that goes all the way back to the founding of the Vatican, or uh, at the founding of the United States. And that's why you see George Bush, like if you read the speech that he did at the Knights of Columbus, like, that's why George Bush is so cozy with the Knights of Columbus and with the Roman Catholic Church. He said he saw God in the eyes of Benedict the 16th, and he referred to the war in Iraq as a crusade. <laughs> Where was that um, page here? Um, give me a second. Oh, I lost it. Oh, I still have it up. Yeah, okay, I just want to show you. So Carl Anderson, who Bush said is more than just an introducer of presidents, he works with the presidents. Where did Carl Anderson go to school? Oh, Jesuit Seattle University. Would you look at that? Jesuit Seattle University is where Muhammad Alabar went, who is the chairman of Amar Properties, which is literally building up Dubai in the Middle East. And uh, Amar, uh, Muhammad Alabar is a board of directors at Jesuit Seattle University. And his company is literally like the Burj Khalifa, all the, tour, all the tall buildings in Dubai, King Abdullah Economic City, the new projects in Karachi, <clears throat> all built by Al, uh, Amar Properties who has a Jesuit trained uh, executive, one of the most powerful uh, businessmen in the Middle East. Okay, but you see here, um, Carl Anderson was trained by the Jesuits and he was a member of the bar of the District of Columbia. Would you look at that? And he was admitted to practice law for the US Supreme Court. And there's a Roman Catholic majority on the United States Supreme Court, uh, six, to nine, six to three. And the, the only supposed Protestant on the Supreme Court um, Neil Garouche was trained by the Jesuits at Georgetown Prep. And according to Brett Kavanaugh, what happens at Georgetown Prep stays at Georgetown Prep. <laughs> you see, and during the Reagan administration, who was made a Knight of Malta, uh, Carl Anderson, Jesuit trained current Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus, served in various positions of the executive office of the President of the United States, including a special ass assistant to the President, an acting director of the White House Office of Public Liaison. You look at that. <laughs> During that time, he, along with many others in the White House, disagreed with the U.S. Surgeon General Everett Koop about how to speak about AIDS, writing that, quote, failure to make moral judgments on this behavior is why, is we, is why we have this epidemic, end quote. Wow, what a blasphemous thing to say. The, Carl Anderson know, knew full well that the Jesuits in 1988 through the University of St. Louis gave Dr. Robert Gallo a sword of Ignatius of Loyola. You can find the source for that. Okay, um, I'll, even, I'll direct you to that even just quickly right now. I'm going to wrap up this video here shortly. 
it. Um, and you see here, and it, just back to Bush here. So Carl Anderson's a person who works with presidents, at least this president. And I'm proud to have his help. It's good to see my family friend, Virgil Denchant, who is a former Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus. Virgil, it's good to see you, sir. This is Bush referring to the former Supreme Knights of the Knights of Columbus as sir. Thank you for such a warm greeting in the photo op line and reminding me of some of the great days gone past. And Bush continues, <clears throat> I'm proud to see, be here with Cardinal McCarrick. It's good to see you, sir. Here's a neighbor in my temporary residence. <laughs> Look at that. No separation of church and state. This is a mockery. I appreciate Cardinal Egan. I appreciate Cardinal Vergali of the great city of Philadelphia, Cardinal Francis George of Chicago, Cardinal Keeler of Baltimore at Maryland. This is George W. Bush speaking at the Knights of Columbus Convention in Dallas. I'm honored you are all here. I thank you for your presence. I am honored to be in the presence of Cardinal Marchowski, the Archbishop of Krakow, who succeeded the Holy Father in that role. Welcome to the United States. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you coming, sir. I appreciate Bishop Wilton and Gregory's leadership on the Conference of Catholic Bishops. Yeah. And then look, look, look at this quote here. So it's a George Bush says, the Knights were born in New Haven, Connecticut. Come to think of it, so was I. Look at the laughter. From your foundations in a small church basement, you have raised up one of the great America, one of the great America's organizations dedicated to charity and mutual assistance in the fight for civil liberties. <laughs> and he even says here, this has been Jeb Bush is now a fourth degree Knight of Columbus, and there's lots of sources. I've seen Peter Dale Scott write about it. Jeb Bush is controlling the drug trade out of Florida. But you see here, I'm, George Bush says, I'm proud to say that my family has contributed to your ranks. A few years ago, Governor Jeb became a knight. Applause. And he, yes, and he recently took his third degree. <laughs> so I recommend you read this uh, whole speech. Just you know, It shows that there is no uh, clear evidence of no separation of church and state in the United States. There's lots of evidence out there already that there is no separation of church and state in the United States. But this is just further proof that there is no separation of church and state. Um, yeah, so this is the source here for Robert Gallo. Uh, this was this is a 1988 issue of the St. Louis University Bulletin. And you see Carl Anderson just with his remarks about AIDS, saying it was a moral crisis. You know, it's just Jesuitical sophistry. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you the source for this quick. Hit control F Gallo. You see here, that October 1988, the university gave its first sword of Ignatius Loyola to Ro Dr. Robert C. Gallo, who co-discovered that HIV causes AIDS. The sword of honor was created to commend, quote, significant achievement to benefit all of humankind, end quote. <laughs> what a Jesuitical uh, quote there. Yeah, but you see, this, is, this, this, ha this happened in the Reagan administration. And uh, like, I'll show you some other just good, uh, I put up, I found, if you want like Franz Van, I found Franz Van Poppen's memoirs. Um, I uploaded this, I, I'm going to get a better PDF. Um, but Jesuit, uh, the late Jesuit Joseph Rettinger wrote a memoir book that was edited by John Poimian, but like a, the scan didn't come out. It's readable, but I'm going to get a better uh, scan. But you can read that now. Uh, just to, to some articles that like I've, Put on that show there's no separation of church and state uh, in the u.s i'll show you the new york times actually did a couple of decent ones if you haven't read them i'll just direct you to those all of this uh loads here <laughs> give me a second Okay, so this one here, this is actually a really good article here. I put this into PDF. This is called The Secrets of Leonard Leo, the man behind Trump's Supreme Court pick. A Catholic fundamentalist who controls a network of right-wing groups funded by dark money has put three justices on the court. He's about to get a fourth. This was done in 2018 by Jay Mickelson of the Daily Beast. This is really good. Leonard Leo is the vice president of the Federalist Society. The Federalist Society is like a front group for the Jesuits. 18 uh judges and trump's administration are affiliated with the federalist society leonard leo is connected to the, the coke uh right-wing network he's connected to uh opus day uh corkery's who are you know, neil corkery's uh heading up the sudan relief fund opus day um hard right-wing uh catholic um 
It's interesting information in this article here. This was interesting here that the Catholic groups of the Catholic roots of Obama's activism. Jason Horowitz, March twenty second, two thousand fourteen, New York Times. Barack Obama. There is a quote ex Jesuit who is a uh, Greg Galuzzo who is working with Obama in uh, the, as a community organizer in Chicago. And actually with Obama, I put up uh, Barack Obama. One of the first things he did was give he gave a commencement address at the Catholic University of Notre Dame. May 17th, 2009, I put the transcript of that up as well. May Russell, I found she did a really good article here called The Nazi Connection to the JFK Assassination. I recommend you read that. Here's actually just some, just kind of highlighting the theme of the video, the separation of church and state. Here's more further proof that there's no separation of church and state. Um, I have this open right here. This is with Herbert Hoover, who ran against um, Al Smith in 1928. Supposedly, you know, like uh, Al Smith, like... Uh, you know, whoever winning, defeating Al Smith shows that there's no Catholic power in the U.S. And uh, that's a product of baloney. You see here, uh, Herbert Hoover accepted uh, an award from the Catholic Boys Brigade of the United States, September 29th, 1932. You can read that note here. I'll just leave that on the screen if you want to pause and read that. And then I also found the source for Hoover sent a message to the Knights of Columbus, to the Supreme Knight Martin Carmody. March 29th, 1932. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, though. And just uh, throughout history, you know, like uh, U.S. President uh, John Tyler. Actually, if you read it, I have the book. Uh, I put the book on Georgetown University. Actually, this is a recent article that shows, you know, more no separation of church and state. This is from America Magazine. The new Democratic Party leader, Tom Perez, has deep Jesuit connections. On February 27th, 2017. <laughs> Let's see, this uh, this is another really interesting article here. More showing there's no separation of church and state. Trump's Catholic Warriors, Stephen Beal, January 31st, 2017, National Catholic Register. Donald Trump did say we need to be on guard for anti-Catholic bias at his Al Smith dinner speech. And Trump said that he went to the Al Smith dinner as a little boy. There's more on George Bush. This is a really good article that shows <laughs> how controlled George Bush is by the Catholics. It, it claims George Bush was a secret Catholic. And uh, Rick Santorum, the Knight of Malta, Opus Dei, who is uh, saying that the pedophile uh, Joe Paterno was like, oh, Joe Paterno got a bad rap. He's a good guy. And uh, Jerry Sandusky. Um, I mean, Joe Paterno was the Jesuit trained coach that oversaw uh, Jerry Sandusky's pedophilia and did nothing about it. Joe Paterno was trained by the Jesuits at Brooklyn Prep. Um, but you see here, this is a good article here. A Catholic wind in the White House, Daniel Burke, April 13th, 2008. This, <laughs> this, uh, you can even just read on the screen here. Um, this is a quote here from Bush scribe William McGurn. I used to say that there are more Catholics on President Bush's speech writing team and on any Notre Dame starting lineup in the past half century. And, uh, you know, B the head of uh, Barack Obama and John Kerry's speech writing team was Jesuit trained at Holy Cross, John Favreau, who is the uh, uh, valedictorian at Holy Cross. Richard Nixon had a Jesuit priest, John McLaughlin, SJ, who ran the McLaughlin Group Show on MSNBC as his speech writer. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I put the story of Donald Trump's sister giving $4 million to uh, Fairfield in here. This story is here how uh, the Herman Abs, a uh, Nazi uh, banker who worked for IG Farben and Deutsche Bank in West Germany, uh, joined uh, the IOR in 1983 and actually like worked uh, at Solvay, where John Paul II worked uh, in World War II. Very interesting. You know, like the New York Times like, did an article here. on. There's some interesting... Uh, reads that I put up here on the on the page. I put up Abra Manhattan's uh, books, the rest that I had, Murder in the Vatican, full book, Vatican Billions, full book, Irish, uh, Religious Terror in Ireland, full book. I put up a few Paul Blanchard books I got from the library. This book here by Paul Williams is good, Operation Gladio, but I've heard Paul Williams talk and he puts out disinformation. He says the Federal Reserve is a private institution controlled by like, international bankers like the Rothschilds and he says that like the Vatican is like has no uh, is like a willing dupe of like the international money cartel which you know is which I think is dishonest I think Paul Williams knows that the Vatican is not a willing dupe 
of the international money cartel. And he, I'm sure he, I think he knows that in the Jewish encyclopedia, the Rothschilds are referred to as the guardians of the papal treasure. And I think he knows that Mayor Amschel Rothschild is a Knight of Malta. Because he writes about lots of Knight of Malta in this book. It's a good book, but I was just uh, hearing some of Paul Williams' interviews, I got a little concerned because he was a former professor at Creighton University, which is a Jesuit university. And he um, worked for the FBI and used to write for the Jesuit trained Knight of Malta, William Buckley's uh, National Review paper. <laughs> So, and actually, when, when you're reading uh, George W. Bush's remarks here to the Knights of, I put this up here, George W. H. W. Bush's remarks to the Knights of Columbus Supreme Council Convention, New York City, August 5th, 1992. I've read from a source, I put it up on my Rome, Rome Rules subreddit blog, George H. W. Bush visited Catholic Notre Dame University more than any president uh, before him, and he accepted an honorary degree in 1992 from Notre Dame University, but yet George H.W. Bush's uh, director of the CIA while he was the head of the CIA, this guy was as connected as you can get <laughs> to the Jesuits in the Roman Catholic Church, Vernon Walters. Vernon Walters um, personally like oversaw the coup to take out President Goulart in Brazil in 1965. Vernon Walters personally, was he was in Fiji a day before the coup there in 1964. This guy was been, this guy was the Reagan's roving ambassador. Vernon Walters was involved in like 10 different coups in South America and Southeast Asia. He, he went to see the Pope like 12 times in his book, The Silent Missions. He talks about how like when he went to see the Pope, the Pope would like clear everyone out of the room and you'd have like private one-on-one -on -one time with the Pope. But you see Vernon Walters was trained by the Jesuits at Stonyhurst College and he was a Knight of Malta. <laughs> um, He was like a speechwriter for uh, Nixon. You see, he was an he was an interpreter for many presidents. And this is Jesuit trained Knight of Malta Vernon Res of Vernon Walters. He was President Harry Truman, who spoke at Fordham University in 1946 and received an honorary degree. Truman also gave a Jesuit priest Joseph Callahan uh, a knight a, a medal of honor. Joseph O'Callahan, S.J. Further proof of no separation of church and state. Truman also tried to create an official ambassador to the Vatican by night, nominating Knight of Malta, General Mark Clark, uh, as an, America's official ambassador to the Vatican in 1952, but it was shot down by the Protestant opposition. And Harry Truman also in, like signed off on the Knights of Columbus uh, labor uh, crusades in the 1940s. <laughs> you see, Vernon Walters was an, an advisor to Truman. And he was an interpreter in many meetings with America's Spanish and Portuguese speaking Latin American allies. This Vernon Walters was all over the place. Um, I've seen, uh, there was even a, a New York Times article had was like Vernon Walters. Saw the Pope many times, even like uh, there's inf information on uh, Vernon Walters, uh, his relationship with the Pope and Carl Bernstein's article uh, that I put on my library called uh, The Holy Alliance. Um, there's just this really short New York Times article. Um, where was that here? I found I saw this one New York Times article. It was like two pages long. It was like Vernon Walters is, uh, went to the Vatican for a secret meeting of the Pope. No information has been released. I don't think this is it. You know, William Casey, Knight of Malta, who was the head of the CIA, would fly to the Vatican in a windowless C-141 jet to be, quote, taken underground to the Vatican, end quote. <laughs> William Casey was, like Vernon Walters, trained by the Jesuits at Fordham University. But I think I'm going to end it here. Just to, to, I just wanted to show you this more definitive proof if you haven't seen that information on there's no separation of church and state. Actually, interesting with the Rockefellers, D David Rockefeller in his memoirs near the end of the book, he, um, he actually talks about how like, he allied with a whole bunch of Catholic reactionaries in forming the Bilderberg Group. Um, Prince Bernhard, one, he writes about J Joseph Rettinger meeting him. But Rockefeller in his memoirs, David Rockefeller uh, says, I have some claim I'm part of an international conspiracy that seeps to like, take economic and political control of the world. And he says, I, if I, I stand, if accused of that charge, I stand by it proudly. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what David Rockefeller said in his memoirs. <laughs> Actually, there's information. Uh, this is a fantastic found, find I found here. If you haven't read through this, you should go through this. It's, I titled this, Another 
another pro deal pamphlet. There's a few pamphlets and more declassified documents on pro deal, including letters from Father Felix Morley and to Youth Ant. Youth Ant was the Secretary General of the UN. He was a Burmese individual, but you see, he was. <laughs> he, you can see the address that he gave to a group of individuals at this uh, event called the Dinner of the Nine Angels that Father Felix Morlian was attending. The Jesuit priest Augustin Bay S.J., who is the confessor of Hitler's Pope Pius XII, was there in attendance, and Nelson Rockefeller was here also. Uh, so I'll direct you to that. But this is um this is there's some really interesting information in this article to say the least, or these batch of documents. Um, I'll show you. There's one like uh, yeah, look at this. This is a this is a letter from the Inter-American Development Bank, R.E. Father Morlian and the Program of Catholic Church for Indoctrination of Latin American Priests. I repeat, Father Morlian and the Program of Catholic Church for Indoctrination of Latin American Priests and divulgation, divulgation of Principles of U.S. Free Enterprise System. <laughs> Telling you right there in the subject matter, that there's a conspiracy to uh, colonize South America using uh, missionary priests working hand in hand with American corporations. Okay. Um, but you can see this letter is from T. Grayton Upton to uh, Walter Rostow, special assistant of the White House. So I reckon but like, there's tons of interesting uh, art, like um, letters in here. So here's a letter from Father Felix Morley and to Grayton Upton, Executive Vice President of the Inter-American Bank. And look at the board of directors here at this pro deal front group, American Council for International Promotion. Like you see the Knight of Malta, J. Peter Grace right here. Interesting, these interesting names come up here. James Farley was connected <laughs> to this organization. You see Gerard, Gerard L. Carroll. There's another Carroll name that pops up. Um, so I look at those. Um, I want to show, where was this? There's a document here where it talked about Morlian raising hundreds of millions of dollars. I just want to find that here really quick. Um, and the, you can, there's a letter from the Pope actually personally, like expressing his like regard for like the pro deal movement. Um, let me find that here. Yeah, and this was the dinner here, the, the nine brotherhood, the ninth brotherhood banquet. This is the banquet that Nelson Rockefeller attended with the Jesuit priest Augustin Bay S.J., who is Pius XII's confessor. Um, see, see, these are here's a letter from the deputy chief to cabinet for Youth Ant's office. Um, let me find that note here. You see, so here's a letter from Morland to Youth Ant. I've communicated to His Eminence Cardinal Bay, who is a Jesuit, to, to other Roman authorities as well as to our American Council, your wonderfully kind and spontaneous acceptance of our invitation to speak at the Ninth Brotherhood Banquet, which will be held at the plaza on Monday. Um, <clears throat> you see, like, so Morley, he's, he's writing to the Secretary of the United Nations. <laughs> so he's plugged into uh, geo geopolitical diplomacy as it gets. I just wanted to find... You, there's this, oh, where is this here? I don't want the video to run on too long, but there was a really interesting note in this batch of documents. Okay, right here. This was sent from uh, T. Great Upton. P.S. I understand that the commitments have already been received for contributions from businesses of $250 million and that Father Morlian expects this to be increased to a billion in the next few weeks. That's what I want to see there. But uh, he, that was what I was looking for. But here's the speech from... Um, Youth Ant, that just shows you that Rock Nelson Rockefeller was at this ninth banquet dinner. You know, and like the Rockefeller money machines agenda in South America and the Jesuits uh, agenda in South America is very uh, similar. It's a colonial imperialistic control of uh, of the continent and literally all over the world, like especially over in the Caspian Sea. But you see here, the, you, Mr. Youth Ant's talking here. Mr. Chairman, your eminence, esteemed leaders of religion and philosophy, Governor Rockefeller, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. So you, the Rockefeller is here, okay? So just, just don't buy, like, there's a lot of disinformation out there that like the, the Vatican is like a willing dupe of the Rockefeller international money cartel, and that's just disinformation. Okay? Don't, don't, don't fall for that. I'm just bringing that up because I saw Paul Williams actually pushing that, and Paul Williams wrote a good book on uh, Operation Gladio. 
<clears throat> there's actually lots of information on Felix Morley and, and uh, Paul Williams' book on Gladio. Actually, I put up, uh, I put this book here on my channel. You can uh, page now. You can read. This is another good one. I recommend you go through all the stuff I put up: articles, declassified uh, documents, memos, books, journals. Um, but you see the FBI and the Catholic Church. J. Edgar Hoover. Like uh, you see how close he was with the Jesuits. I also found um, there's a recent document that was released by J. Edgar Hoover. This document kind of shows you the origins of the national security state. Um, and here's a good article actually here on, I mentioned Jet, uh, in reading George Bush's speech that Jeb Bush was a, made a third degree Knight of Columbus. You read here that he's a fourth degree Knight of Columbus now. This is by the New York Times. Jeb Bush, 20 years after his conversion, is guided by his Catholic faith. Mike Paulson, March 17th, 2015, New York Times. You see, this was the uh, combined PDF I put together here that you should read after reading how close Hoover was to the, the Jesuits and some of May Brussels information I've been reading, Hoover is very uh, connected to the Interpol German police organization as well, international police organization, which had many connections to German Nazis. But Hoover, um, you see, planned a mass jailing in 1950. Um, he wanted to throw uh, tens of thousands of Americans into like FEMA-type FEMA -type camps all over uh, the United States, and you, there's a there's a link uh, Hoover's letter here to Truman's special uh, consultant Sidney Sewers, who's the former de director of Central Intelligence, uh, connected to a few corporations, the Council of Foreign Relations, and, um, and that's very interesting. And just with with Bush's uh, where was that here? With the Bush, uh, where the disinformation with the CFR, they, they hide. Um, where was that page here? Give me a second. Okay, here, the CFR hides information like this. You can see John C. Gannon was the White House liaison, uh, or the head of the White House transition team that created the Department of Homeland Security. Okay, I'll show you a picture of him here. But a lot of people say like this is the, that like the Rothschilds or like the Rockefellers are controlling the CFR, and it's not true. There's all sorts of Vatican connections to the CFR. Like the current Janet Napolitano, Jesuit trained at uh, Santa Clara, former head of the Department of Homeland Security is a current board of directors at the CFR. Like uh, there's all sorts of Vatican connections to the CFR. Okay, but you see here, John Gannon served as the, in the, this is just more connections. Gannon's a big connection to the, the Jesuits to the Bush administration. Gannon served as the CIA's director of European analysis between 1992 and 1995. He was the deputy director of intelligence from 95 to 97 and his assistant director of central intelligence for analysis and production from 98 to 2001. He was the chairman of the National Intelligence Council from 91 to 2001. You see, after his retirement from the CIA in 2001, he served in the White House as the head of the intelligence team standing up the Department of Homeland Security, and later on the Hill as a staff director on the House Select Committee on Homeland Security. And Gannon also worked at BAE Systems as a president of the $1.7 billion intelligence and security sector, which successfully managed one of the industry's largest FOCI programs, supporting U.S. intelligence, defense, and homeland security missions. <laughs> Just read, uh, read Zabrenner Brzezinski, who is Jesuit trained. Zabrenner Brzezinski was Jesuit trained at Loyola High School, Montreal, and a friend of the Pope. Read his book, The Grand Chessboard, and how he writes about installing, quote, security states all over the world. That's what the, <laughs> that's what this program that John C. Gannon uh, was working on would have been doing. In February 2014, Gannon was appointed the position of executive director of the congressionally directed 9-11 Review Commission of the FBI. So gatekeeping 9-11 here, this is a huge connection to the Jesuits, which is issued its report online March 2015. In 2016, he was appointed the technical advisory group of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. In 2017, he joined the Bipartisan Policy Center's Task Force on U.S. Strategies to Combat the Ideological Component of Terrorism, charged by Lee Hamilton and Tom Keene. Um, you see here, since then, he's been an adjunct professor at the Graduate Security Studies Program at Georgetown. Okay, he's got won the CIA's Distinguished Intelligence Medal. He's won a bunch of medals from the CIA, you can read there. Okay. Um, George W. Bush nominated him the National Security Medal, the nation's highest intelligence award. Okay. He's got awards from uh, Holy Cross College, which is Jesuit. Okay. He's on the Board of Visitors of the National Intelligence University. He's on the Council Seat. He's on the Council of Foreign Relations. 
Okay, Gannon's on the board of directors of the Voices of September 11th. Okay, and since 2004, he has served on various committees of the National Academics of Science. Gannon earned his BA in psychology from Jesuit Holy Cross College. He got his MA and PhD in Washington University in St. Louis. He served in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps in Jamaica. I repeat, he served in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps in Jamaica. He is a former naval officer, retired captain, and of the Jesuit priest Joseph O'Callaghan, who Truman made, um, who, who Truman gave a Medal of Honor to, uh, was the actual this Jesuit priest Joseph O'Callaghan was the actual official chaplain to the United States Navy, and a former William uh, Matthews or William Francis Matthews or for, no, Francis P. Matthews. Uh, was that Supreme Knight of Knights of Columbus in the 1940s and then became the Secretary of Navy in 1949. And Francis P. Matthews was also Jesuit trained. Okay. And he was also elected to the City Council in Falls Church, where he's the current chairman of the Planning Commission. <laughs> okay. But this is just information that the shills don't tell you. Okay. Um, the clear Catholic connections, just showing that there is no uh, separation of church and state. But I'll show you just a picture here of John C. Gannon. And you can even, I'm, you can listen to him. I think he's spoken on C-SPAN um, a few times. Just to show you a photo of him if you haven't seen him. There he is here. He's he Je Jesuit trained at Holy Cross and Georgetown. Knight of Malta, and he was a Jesuit volunteer corps, okay, on the board of the CF or member of the CFR. Okay. I'm gonna see if anyone's in the chat here, and then I'm gonna wrap it up. Oh well, yeah, that, that's uh, you have to see, uh, Elliot. Yeah, that's a common information line. That's what you know. That's a, that's what I, that's what I saw. Like Mark Passio does, the, the Roman Catholic Mark Passio. He says, "Oh, it's not it's not the Roman Catholic Church or the Jesuits or the Knights of Malta controlling this. It's it's a group of interconnected uh, organizations and uh, ideologies that form one global nameless network. And you know, it's all about you know creating like this mystique that oh, we can't know who the rulers are like they're." They're so like they're so advanced, uh, like they're so interconnected, and in, like uh, but you know that's all to gatekeep the uh, the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, and, oh, and, uh, I didn't realize you uh, made. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Blue Bud. I didn't realize you made uh, videos, Elliot. I'll check those out too. You know, thanks everyone for tuning in, and uh, I recommend uh, going through some of these these uh, posts on my uh, library page that show clearly there's no separation of church and state and actually well so i'll end off with this like look at in the current canadian election i thought it was interesting because uh the current chief justice of canada richard wagner who was trained by the jesuits at the college de jean bray bouffe he had, richard wagner devout catholic comes from a family of devout irish catholics richard wagner um he, while he was being sworn in as the chief justice Richard Wagner, it was the first time that the Ottawa Catholic District School Board was in attendance. And Richard Wagner pointed at the Ottawa Catholic District School Board and said, you guys are the future of Canada. You know, sublimely saying that the Catholics are the future of Canada. And the Canada has been concentrated to the Virgin Mary in 1947. Um, even I think the United States of America was concentrated to the Virgin Mary uh, like the uh, in 1940, in 1847 in uh, Baltimore at the Assumption of Mary in Baltimore. So the, these Marian Congresses have happened all over the place. And uh, I don't have the quote up right now, but in Count Paul von Hoydisbrick's book, 14 Years of Jesuit, he writes how like the Jesuits created the Marian Congresses and he gives the two names of the Jesuits. But look at the look at the current leader of the opposition who's running against Trudeau. Trudeau is a devout Catholic trained by the Jesuits. You see a photo of Trudeau with Pope John Paul as a boy. <laughs> we look at here, Andrew Shearer. Uh, has been a deacon of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese, and the deacon is a member of the diaconate in the Office of the Christian Churches. So, like, he's a member of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Ottawa. Andrew Shearer, look at this. He transferred to St. Patrick's Basilica in Ottawa. 
Okay. <laughs> and look at this here. At the, what I mentioned about what Richard Bragner said about the Ottawa Catholic School Board. Look at Shear ran as a school trustee to the Ottawa Carlton Catholic School Board. Okay. He's a devout Catholic. Devout. Okay. He was a deacon in the church. So like, who's gonna win the like? Who's gonna win the next election in Canada? The Roman Catholic Church is. The joke's on us. Like it is every single every single election cycle. That's why they're always laughing at us at the Al Smith dinner in the United States. But I'm going to show you, this is just the current, if you're not aware of the, who the ruler of Canada is, it's Terrence Pendergrass, SJ. And he makes Trudeau and Andrew Shearer, if he's elected, will dance like a pup, like puppets on strings for Terrence Pendergrass, SJ. Oh, absolutely. They're all, yeah, you're, you know it, Blue Bud. They're all in the club. Like, see, oh, look at this. Look at, look who, uh, when Arturo Sosa, the black Pope came to uh, Canada, look who went to see him. Terrence Pendergrass, SJ. What's you look, look at? <laughs> Actually, I, there's articles on the Jesuits website. The, the Canadian Jesuit province has been merged into one now. It used to be Jesuit East and Jesuit West, and now there's just one Jesuit province. And it's been, uh, there was a feast of Ignatius Loyola in, uh, in July 31st, 2018, to celebrate that. But there you go right there. There's the ruler of Canada taking his orders from the ruler of the world, Arturo Sosa. But yeah, I think that's all for this one, YouTube. Peace and love, and uh, nom noms.